Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. My guest today is Gabrielle Burish Teichman. Gabrielle is a holistic color consultant and color light practitioner in Vienna and pioneer in these fields in Australia. I'm sorry, Austria. Gabrielle's work comprises the aesthetic, the psychological, and the energetic healing level of color and light. To her, color is her fascination and vocation. She feels, sees, lives color with all her senses. Color and light are a medium, a language that she feels at home with. Starting in 1987, Gabrielle began working as one of Vienna's first color consultants, doing groundbreaking work in bringing this topic to the public. Since 1980. Science 1995, Gabrielle has been specializing in a living space color consultant and in 1997 gained a diploma with Theo Gimbel at England's Hygienia College for Color Light Therapy. Additionally, over the past 23 years, Gabrielle has extensive experience with various color light methods such as Hygienia, I'm not saying that right, color ther light therapy, the light work of Dr. Jacob Lieberman, and with Carl Ryberg's monochrome color dome. Welcome to the podcast, Gabrielle. Thanks a lot, Kimberly, for having me. Thanks a lot. Yes, and we're going to learn about all these words I've been stumbling over <laughs> as we're sitting in the podcast. So <laughs> excuse my pronunciation, but just so people can get to know you, um, tell us a little bit about you, where you started out, because you've been through some countries and Yes. So just tell us about you. So I'm, I'm Austrian, born in Canada, in Ottawa, Canada. So I'm a former foreign Austrian because I was raised the first 13 years, first in Geneva, Switzerland. And then I spent four years in Mexico City, Mexico. And this was in the age between nine to 13. And I think that's quite an important age that can be very um, yeah, decisive. And I guess that my first interest for colors has been marked there because Mexico, of course, is known as a very colorful country. And then at the age of 13, I came back to Vienna, Austria. But actually, I, until then, I only used to be an Austrian by passport because when I came back, I felt a little bit um, like a foreigner here. And actually I still had to learn to speak perfect, perfectly German because although my parents are Austrians, I went to a French school for until the age of 13. And then I, I, I finished my high school in Vienna. I did the Matura and I did my first studies at the Vienna Economic University in commercial sciences. But then I, I realized, I, I guessed this was not really what I was aiming for. And as I have quite some family in the US, um, I, tra I was traveling the US and by then I discovered that there was some kind of formation to become a color light um, a consultant actually, a color image consultant in California. So I started then my off as one of the first color consultants in Vienna. By that time, I think it was in the year 1987, color consulting was completely unknown and I was looked at as if I came from, the, from another planet. And by that time, I still had a job with Austrian Airlines. So I started off having two jobs, you know, my, my Austrian Airlines um, employee job. And I started off doing uh, uh, color consultations. And, um, and my first way of, of re doing marketing was, because it was, of course, the times before internet or mobile phones or anything, that I kind of contacted the newspapers and informed them what I was doing. So, and they reported about this holistic color consulting that I had founded. And that was my first uh, kind of marketing because these uh, articles were very 
big and so it happened to me that the phone was sometimes ringing for weeks mm -hmm. so so by then I had to decide so what do I want to do do I want to stay employed or do I dare to to take the step to become self-employed and I decided uh, at the age of 27 to become self-employed and that's the moment in time when I started off with my color work as self-employed and by then I was already doing um, classes and running uh, workshops also for companies so that was a little bit of my background wow <laughs> <laughs> so how many languages do you know what languages do you know <laughs> Well, uh, I, I speak, uh, well, French used to be my first uh, language. And then at the age of 13, I skipped to German because in Austria, we speak, of course, German. So French, German, uh, English, and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Although I don't, don't speak all four uh, perfectly. Mm -hmm. And because I speak uh, French and a little bit of Spanish, I also understand Italian because they are very related. So yeah, so that's that's my, my starting point. I was traveling a lot with my parents and I had the chance to, to see many places. And I think, I guess as a kid also, because I was interested in drawing and painting and art already as a kid, that's the, the, the point in time where I started to, to be fascinated about color. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So um, when you paint, what do you, what do you like to paint? And are you using oils or acrylics or watercolors? Well, I, when I started painting, I, I started uh, using acrylics. And I had the chance to have an, an Austrian artist as my teacher for several years. Mm -hmm. So I went to his, you know, atelier or workshop to paint. And, and then I already also painted with uh, oil colors. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to paint abstract, but I also have already painted, you know, like landscapes and uh, yes, and I'm influenced. My first influence was the Impressionists, mm -hmm. but I have a strong influence in art with the Fauvismus. That's a very colorful period mm -hmm. um, that came after the Impressionists in the beginning of the 20th century. So mm -hmm. kind of very uh, colorful. Yeah, so I, I like painting, but that's kind of, you know, it's more a pastime. So it's not, it's not uh, my profession, but it's, I guess, because I like everything that has to do with color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That's what I was connecting that, you know, your work isn't even work. It's just part of you. Yes, yes, that, that's true. I mean, my work is my, my calling and it's my vocation and I, it's kind of, I feel at home in my work. Mm -hmm. And actually when I'm working, it doesn't really make me tired because it feels as if I was kind of in my energy, you know, in my energy field. Of course, yes, sometimes when I'm running a, a, a workshop or a, a, a lecture, this can be challenging, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's kind of my, my energy I feel at home with. And it has to do, of course, because I'm working, you know, with the, as a color consultant and also as a color light therapist. Mm -hmm. Because after my first years when I was working as a color consultant, I got so fascinated by color and how deep the impact of color is on us. You know? you know, the psychological effect and also the, the physical effect and the visual is effect that I did further trainings in color light therapy. But this is also already 27 years ago. By then I did my first training with the Hygieia Color Light Therapy Institute in the UK mm -hmm. with Theo Gimbel. 
and on the field of color light therapy, I also was one of the first ones in Austria starting to work with that. Because by then, this was a field that was also quite unknown. So I was um, also kind of a pioneer on, on this field. So although, you know, uh, the field of color light therapy is maybe not so usual yet, yeah, or mainstream, but I'm, I'm a person that is already working for a long time on this field. And actually, you know, because I said I was one of the first ones starting with color consulting in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And more than 20 years ago, I was teaching color consulting. I was teaching two small groups of people to become holistic color consultants. Mm -hmm. And now I'm happy because my former students are also teaching mm -hmm. at now at, a, at an Austrian state recognized institution. Oh, that's and I, could, mm -hmm. and I could have never imagined, you know, 25 years ago that, I mean, this is going to, this is a field of work that is going to be recognized so that it's going to be taught in an institution, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, I was spreading um, some semen, some, 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 some roots, yes. And then, uh, yeah, some, some beautiful uh, plants or, or trees or flowers came, came out, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and so the, my first field of work was the color consulting. So in the color consulting, it's more about the beauty of the color and the harmony of the color, you know, mm -hmm. because I started with this personal color consulting. And while I was working and, you know, it's about beauty and which color suit you best, mm -hmm. what type of color are you and and how do you combine best the colors of your wardrobe? Mm -hmm. But I was the founder in Austria of something I call a holistic color consulting, because by then I discovered that e even when it's about the colors of your wardrobe, of your, of your clothes, what you are, the colors that you are wearing do have a very deep impact on you. It's not only you know, the appearance and the, the, the beauty and the harmony on the outside, mm -hmm. it has, I always used to say, it has um, a threefold impact on you when you're wearing colors. Mm -hmm. It's good for your harmony, for your way you look. It's, it's, uh, it has a, a psychological effect and it supports the nonverbal communication when you are wearing colors that are very good for you because it kind of expresses yourself. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a third level, uh, namely the level that even if you are talking about, you know, fabrics, colors in fabrics, you are always talking about energy and vibration as well, yes? Mm -hmm. As you, of course, know in your profession as well, uh, Kimberly, mm -hmm. So actually the colors that you are wearing influence, you know, your uh, energy field. They have an impact on your energy field. And if you're wearing colors that are in harmony, that kind of strengthens and in, um, supports your energy field. So that's something that I have founded when many years in Austria. So my, my um, focus when I'm working as a color consulting is not uh, the beauty of color alone is it's also the psychological effects and the, the energy. Yeah. So in this first, so the first five years I used to work as a color consultant, I was already by the age of 25, 26 running uh, wor um, uh, workshops for companies, you know, I was doing trainings for companies. I was actually very young for, for doing that, but it was a very good uh, training for me because I quite young learned how to present in a very professional surrounding, yes. So, and after the first five 
five years working as a color consultant, I, I chose to do this further education and training in the UK to become a color light therapist. And, and of course, this is a kind of complementary uh, therapy. And in, as a color light therapist, I have my practice in Vienna, in the center of Vienna. And I'm working with individuals, uh, children also in, in, in a one-to-one -one setting, but also in form of, of small groups, yes. And so it's, it's already been a long time that I'm on my way. <laughs> and, um, and I really love my work, yeah, so it's... <laughs> so, yeah, so let me ask you this. So you started out in this journey. First of all, you went into something that hardly anybody heard of, and you were very young, but there, there had to be so much interest for you to go in that direction. And um, so my, my first question is, were your parents, um, did they have their own business? Were they entrepreneurs or did they work for companies? No, 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 they, they weren't. No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. Well, actually my, my father said to me, he always dreamt of being self-employed and being an entrepreneur, but he didn't, yes. Mm -hmm. So neither my mother nor my father were uh, on this field. And, you know, when I started off, this is already now 30 years ago, almost, um, being self-employed, actually, everybody thought I'm crazy because how can you make yourself, how can you dare, how can you have the courage of doing that mm -hmm. on, a, on a field of profession that nobody knows? Yeah? Yes. So actually... Now I can say I'm very thankful and I'm very happy that I dared to have this courage because um, by the time I decided to become self-employed, I had no support from any, anybody. Mm -hmm. So not from my parents. I mean, you know, because I had this kind of uh, charisma in my family. I'm the crazy one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So my parents thought, oh, she, the crazy one is again having some crazy idea. So they were not supporting me, not also, also not financially. And uh, I, I didn't have a husband or boyfriend and I didn't have, you know, any, any savings. And the best thing that happened regarding my friends is, I mean, if my friends said nothing, that was kind of positive. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you speak to yourself like your self-talk because you're going to something new, you're putting it out there, you have the boldness to go to the newspaper yeah. and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. So now you're putting yourself out there in front of the world, basically, this 20 something uh, young woman. And not only that, but you start working in corporate. And um, what kind of things were you saying to yourself to put yourself out there to have the confidence to go in front of, you know, executives at a corporate setting? Well, uh, I, I think was what what drove me was, I'm sure what drove me was the fascination. I, I was fascinated by what I was doing. And, you know, it was it was kind of a gut feeling from me and I thought by then because I had a good job yeah but I, I wasn't interested <laughs> I mean I, I thought you know I can't stay in my good job because it's I it's not enough for me it doesn't kind of I mean it's not interesting enough for me yeah? and I thought by then I have to try this out I really have to try this to do this because if I don't do it, I think I would always regret it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm, by then I had a, one important consulting that I, because I went to a, a coach or consultant, also somebody, actually it was in the US, mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody who is very intuitive, uh, kind of a channel, yeah, a very professional channel. And I asked her about my path. 
and she acknowledged and that that was helpful for me too you know mm -hmm. because she, i went to a very recognized uh, consultant to ask for advice and also to ask i mean should i dare to do that and is is that the right uh, path for me and she absolutely approved that i should do it and that helped me a lot also yeah it does help especially to yeah. get something from a wise person yeah. When you yeah, need yeah. it. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about the colors you wear. So I've seen in several of your pictures, you kind of wear blues with some green, at least yeah. in the photos I've seen. So yeah. what is the significance for that, those, that color combination for you? Well, what you see today, uh, I, I show it a little bit. It's, it's a combination of turquoise with a little bit of green. And that's one of my favorite pieces of, of clothing um, and turquoise is my favorite color I must say since many years yeah and turquoise has well um, different meanings on, on one hand it's it's known as the color of communication it's very good for all aspects of communication but it also means um, it's also in a way the color of um, innovation, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, said to be uh, the color of the future and the color of the Aquarius, uh, time of Aquarius. And, um, and in my work and with my experience, I understood because, you know, it's close to the, to the color of the heart that is said to be uh, green with pink. So uh, it's also related to the soul. It's also a soul color. And it's very refreshing and optimistic and positive and inspiring. Mm -hmm. And many years ago, when I did my first training in color light therapy, because I did several trainings, uh, I had, had been told that it's a color that is going to be important in the near future. And in the color, in color light therapy, turquoise is also known as, as the color that strengthens the immune system. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, uh, yeah, so it's kind of, you know, the color that gives you the, the strength to stay in, in your own energy and also to kind of be immune to too many energies or too, uh, too many opinions of others, you know, mm -hmm. kind of staying with your energy, yeah. And I found that, that also interesting, especially now in times of COVID, yeah, mm -hmm. um, as it's said to be the color of the, the immune system, when you, uh, when you manage to stay in your energy and not uh, feeling uh, easily offended by what others are doing or others are saying, you know, kind of staying with you, with your energy and detaching about um, the opinions of others. Uh, this psychologically also uh, has a positive impact on your immune system because you're staying more in your energy. Mm -hmm. So as you see, it uh, turquoise has has many quite quite a few meanings, and I like all the meanings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so is it the color you're wearing? Does it also affect the other people around you, or if you have a room that's turquoise, does that affect you? How is color affecting us? Yes, colors all, always affect us. Uh, and this is regardless if we notice it or not, because the color is a subconscious communication, yeah? And, um, and of course, colors do have certain traits, yeah? Like, for example, there are cool colors and warm colors, yeah? And uh, there are colors that, that are said to be more um, exciting, or more activating, 
like the warm colors, red, orange, yellow, and the, the cool colors are said to be more relaxing, you know, more related to the parasympathetic uh, system, yeah. So um, it's very interesting if you uh, think of colors, uh, if you first think of nature, where do you see the colors, mm -hmm. yeah? And, and for example, the beautiful uh, uh, picture that is behind you, Kimberly, mm -hmm. yeah? So if you think of a beautiful sky or a beautiful lake or water or the sea, that's the bluish colors, the blue tone. So at the same time, it's colors that give a, uh, an impression of depth, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can look into depth, you know, it's not restraining, yeah? And this uh, um, enhances or promotes feelings of, of freedom and of course also relaxation, yes? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's more uh, quiet or for example, if you look consciously what the, how does the horizon look after sunset? Mm -hmm. You know, the colors of, of, um, of the depth or the horizon or the colors in the distance after sunset are always bluish mm -hmm. yeah, before it gets dark, yeah? And of course, you know, the color of sun, I mean, you, you, you can't look or you shouldn't look into the sun, you know, that's a strong yellow and yellow of course, it wakes you up, yeah? It activates you, it makes you happy, yeah? So all, you know, and so I find that very interesting that you can kind of, you know, um, understand the impacts color have by uh, consciously looking where are the colors in nature and how do you feel when you look at them? Mm -hmm. So of course, we are constantly, um, under the impression of colors. And so they always have an effect on, on us if we wear them or of course also in, in the interior design because you can change the ambience of a room completely only by, you, by the colors you use, yeah? Mm -hmm. you, can, the, you can change the ambience, you can change uh, the way the furniture looks yeah, mm -hmm. only by by using certain certain colors, and you can change the size and the di dimensions in a room only by using colors. Yeah, mm -hmm. so actually, it's a very uh, impactful language, mm -hmm. but as we are so used to it, we 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 have the tendency of not realizing um, how strong uh, the influence of of colors is yes yes so like today is um a day where i have off so i'm wearing my blue because i have my day off i want to relax i want to be calm but my favorite color is red i have a red car i have a lot of things red um because red makes me feel excited happy and i especially if i'm going to be like on video or on a stage or whatever, I like to wear red, which is just the opposite of the calming. I like this for my day, I went out of calm, but what is that red? If I wear red, am I gonna get in more fights with people that day? Because am I, <laughs> am I stimulating them to be angry? I'm just curious. <laughs> Well, uh, of course, it always says something uh, about a person when, when you, uh, your favorite color says something about you. Why is that? Because your, your, say, uh, fa your favorite color has a certain energy and is, has a symbolism that you can relate with. Yeah. So if you love red, I mean, this says about you, or I guess that you, you are a person that loves to be active. Mm. Uh, you, you also like uh, challenges in some ways, yes? Mm. Uh, you like to um, work on yourself. You are very, um, you, you uh, probably you also like, you like to move a lot or do some sports, yes? Mm. 
Yes. Uh, people, uh, people, uh, red, people who like red are quite often uh, uh, leaders in some ways, or you know, people who have responsibility and who like to take responsibility. Yes. Mm. And to always uh, promote themselves and 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 kind of you know learn and and do and be active. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That True. describes me. I I don't slow down. Uh, in fact, my coach told me on Sunday. I said I'm getting so tired because I worked through all this COVID thing. I said she said when's the last time you had a vacation? I'm like I couldn't remember. It's been over two years ago. She's like, you're taking a vacation. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, exactly, you know, because when you when you are too much, uh, you, when you are living too much in the energy of one color, then you start to miss the complementary energy. And the complementary energy would be turquoise or bluish mm -hmm. in your case, yes. Because we always need, you know, the balance between activity and rest, yes. So maybe that would also explain why you like to be in the blue when you have a day off, yeah. Because actually, uh, we all need this balance, you know, because if you, if you take some rest or some vacation or some quiet time for yourself or do something that is kind of slow, peaceful, relaxing whatever uh, because it's different i mean for for everyone it's different what kind of activities you like to do that will quiet you or make you feel relaxed yeah and so you need that actually because after you have experienced some relaxation and and rest you can again be in your red energy mm -hmm. And if you never stop being in the red energy, that's kind of, I mean, this is kind of, uh, this can be overtiring. Right. That's what I was yeah. experiencing. So that makes total sense to me. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, let's talk about um, some of the things that you have studied, because even though it's common to you, most people don't know what we're talking about. So let's start with the O'Gimbal. I'm in the color therapy arena, so I know he's a very famous person in color, but talk about him and what you learned from him and how you're using it. Yes, well, uh, Theo Gimbel, actually, he was a very important uh, teacher for me. Um, and I did uh, very intense studies with him in the UK, in Gloucestershire, uh, England. And um, he used to be one of the first European pioneers in color therapy, yes, mm -hmm. because he already started off in the years 70s, I think 60s, 70s. I think he, he used to be a teacher uh, working with uh, young adults and, and children. And uh, through his work with children, he developed um, because he may, made a lot of um, tests and and was observing, you know, the children uh, at school. So he developed a, a, a certain form of color light therapy called Hygieia color light therapy, and this is also marked by the combination of color and form as well. So in his theory, he's also applying um, platonic forms and the and some um, uh, the for example the Fibonacci series. That's that's a, a universal law for harmony in rhythm and mathematics. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was very interested in also when you apply for a certain time colored light, what is the, the optimum time, mm -hmm. amount of time, yeah? And with him, so it was a, a life-changing experience for me uh, when I did my studies because I had to back, go back and forth between Austria and the UK. 
And uh, it was really so uh, fascinating when I did my studies. And what is very important also in my work is he's working, he introduced the fact that working with complementary colors is very important because when you apply one color to, to a client, it's important also to give the complementary color. And as you know, the complementary colors, when you would mix them again in the additive light mixing, you would obtain again white light. Mm -hmm. So it's like yin and yang, yeah? Mm -hmm. If you paint complementary colors, you obtain uh, um, dark gray. So in, the, in the, so in painting, they are kind of, um, uh, they are, uh, subtracting themselves and in light mixing complementary colors form the whole of white light again mm -hmm. so they are like yin and yang and like i i explained already to you or i said we were speaking about red and turquoise this is actually very important because it's about balance yeah mm -hmm. so uh, and that's where i learned and uh, and i was um working in this system or I, I like to work with eight colors actually you see them in the background mm -hmm. it's red orange yellow green turquoise blue violet and magenta okay. uh, because every time when you when a client needs one color the complementary is as well very important and I give you a, an, an example for that that I found very interesting because it's a very simple explanation for, um, for um, the issue of a depression or maybe burnout, you know? When we talk about the complementary colors, blue and orange. Mm -hmm. So you see them in the background. Mm -hmm. So in color design, these two colors are perfect with each other because when we look at blue and would for a long time, and when we would cl close our eyes, we would get an after image to blue and it would be orange. Yes. Because that's the color our eyes need, you know that of course, mm -hmm. to kind of you know, erase the first impression of blue. So that's an explanation our, uh, our body needs the complementary color as soon as we have a strong um, impact of one color, let's say blue. So talking about blue and orange, for example, if a client uh, has the color blue blocked uh, or is in need of the color blue, that could be maybe because uh, this person is very stressed out, she has no time, no rest, uh, no um, time for eating, uh, not enough sleep, maybe also problems with sleeping. If that happens, this client very likely might also have problems with orange. And orange is the color called the color of joy. Mm -hmm color of joy, indulgement, dance, uh, leisure, sports, moving. So meaning if a person is so tired that he, she has a blockage with blue, she is very likely uh, to not feel well and maybe be uh, slightly depressed or slightly, you know, in a bad, um, bad mood, yes. So they are completely, uh, they belong together. And the, it's also the other way around. For example, a person that is already depressed, as we know, one symptom of depression is lack of joy. Yeah, complete lack of joy. That would mean the color orange is blocked. And these uh, um, clients quite often have a problem with sleeping and sleeping is blue, yeah. So that's a very simple explanation for the, for the issue of depression. So activity, orange and joy, the, the active joy of orange and the peaceful calmness and relaxation of blue 
belong together. If you have an issue with one of those two, it's very likely that the other one is also going to be affected. So that's very interesting because it explains a lot, yeah? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and well, I like a lot this concept of complementary colors because there's a lot of wisdom in it. Because on one hand, it's, it's a simple model of explaining feelings and, and, and things. Uh, yeah, but on the other hand, it's very important to understand this principle of balance also in the color world, yeah? And this principle of balance is expressed, you know, um, aesthetically, yeah? And also explained by the need of our, our eyes to always see the complementary color when we have a strong impact in the other color. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, and on the psychological level, our need that we need, our the need for both energies. Yeah, so that was just an example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I, I have kind of a wild question, and I don't even know if there's an answer to it. But if someone comes into this world um, sightless, they're blind, or later in life, they no longer see from disease or accident or something, do the colors still affect them because of the wavelengths that they're experiencing? Yes, yes, the answer is yes. And actually I had, um, I used to have a, a client for color light therapy that is a blind, a blind lady. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a very interesting work, yes, with her because she wasn't born blind, but due to an illness, she became blind. So she had some kind of remembering of the colors, yeah? And working with her was so interesting because it was really obvious she uh, takes the colors in by the energy and by the skin, mm -hmm. you know? the vibration uh, and the energy that is kind of, you know, taken in by the skin, the skull, mm -hmm. and also the bones, yes. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was using my monochrome color dome light therapy device with her. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because uh, she gave me the feedback that sometimes she even had the impression of maybe getting a glimpse of seeing something. Ah, interesting. And it, it really had a, a good effect on her. I cannot say exactly if um, the effect would be the same as on a seeing person, but I can say there is an effect very obviously. And this is because, so I can, uh, as you guessed, uh, or as you mentioned, it's because of the vibration. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. So why do people come to see you and how do you work with them? So how does someone know, say, you know, I need some color therapy? <laughs> how do... Well, one, uh, one, one reason is, you know, here in Austria, uh, we have these long winters, mm -hmm. very long cold winters, and especially, you know, in the months of November, December, January, February, we have, of, we have a lot of fog, you know, and, and gray skies. And I mean, for example, now, I mean, I didn't see the sun for, I don't know, I have the impression weeks. Because especially in Vienna, the sky quite often doesn't clear. Yeah, so you have to go to the mountains to see sun and blue skies. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we are here in Central Europe quite affected by seasonal affective disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one one of the reasons. Yeah, so people who know that they are kind of getting, you know, a little bit sad and a little bit depressed, and you know you know, the typical symptoms, eating too much and, and not wanting to go outside. And, and mm -hmm. they, they come for color light therapy and it's very helpful. 
very helpful. Actually, with light, color light therapy, you can completely um, uh, prevent SAD in winter time if you start in time early in autumn. You know, so if you if clients start, for example, in October, September, October, with a couple of sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's easy not to have it. So actually, I, my experience is it's it's very effective for that. One other thing is, and I'm very happy that I can say that now because we are in the middle of a pandemic, mm -hmm. and uh, and my impression is the media is not talking enough about immune system because I mean that's what we all want and all need. Mm -hmm. And uh, light therapy and color light therapy is e excellent for boosting the immune system. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I've been working, you know, also for many years with the um, spectral receptivity system of Jacob Lieberman. Mm -hmm. And with this method, I, I'm able to work in groups because the people can experience the light in a group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my experience is if you do, um, a couple of light therapy sessions, you do not get a cold in winter. You, you do not get sick. Yeah. And this is kind of normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a lot of experience with that with clients as well. So at the beginning of the pandemic, actually, I was doing a lot of light, light therapy and color light therapy on myself and on my family as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had grown up kids who normally say, okay, mom, <laughs> okay, the colors, you know, mm -hmm. but this time they really were very open and 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 received the, the light therapy. So that's the second um, issue where it's very helpful. In my experience, it's uh, color light therapy is very helpful for any kind of stressful situation, you know, if it's you know professional stress or private stress, you know sadness yeah or challenges in private life yeah or any kind of phase in life where people feel very challenged because color light therapy brings you a lot of insight into yourself and into um, brings you also in contact with your inner voice mm -hmm. and your intuition yeah so it's a very uh, it's a um, it's actually, it's a self encounter method. Yeah. That is very supportive for all these uh, kind of issues. I also have very positive um, experiences with improving the eyes, eyesight, mm -hmm. but actually that's something that I cannot promise that this is going to happen because improving the, eyes, the eyesight with light therapy depends on the fact because as we know, uh, you know, uh, people who need glasses sometimes have experienced some kind of stress or negative experiences that, that cause them to suddenly wear or need some glasses. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And actually, if you, if you succeed in, in dissolving this kind of stress that was the root of that, mm -hmm. it can happen that the vision gets a lot better, even to the point that uh, people can take off their glasses. But that's not something I can promise because that depends a lot on the process in which the client is, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, uh, it's excellent for any kind of learning or studying situation because it, it, it is as if our synapses in the brain would get activated. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's excellent for concentration. Yeah. And for example, I also had students, clients who um, reported that in a phase of studying for a big exam, mm -hmm. it really helped them to stay focused, you know, during their, their, their studying and their learning for, for the big exam. So um, 
but this happens especially with the monochrome color dome of Karl Ryberg that is applying monochromatic light. That's a very intense light, as you know, comparable with the, the light and the colors of the pure rainbow because it's very definite uh, vibrations of colors in light. So that's a few examples. Uh, I also have positive experiences with um, certain skin conditions like neurodermitis. But in my work, I'm working more on the psychological and soul level, a little bit less on the physical level because I'm not a physician. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, cautious regarding that, although I know, of course, from my colleagues, also from my international work in the past five years with the International Light Association, where you have a lot of physicians working with color light therapy, that actually um, the areas where you can apply color light therapy uh, impactful are endless. I mean, there are physicians who are applying it for um, physical illnesses, but that's something that I, I do a little bit less. So I, I work more like a psychotherapist with color light therapy. Yes. Beautiful. So you have a big project that you started recently. Talk about that. <laughs> Yes, so that's that's a big joy for me. My big project is called uh, Color Lights World Project. And it was about September 2020, because, you know, the whole world is so challenged because of this pandemic. Yeah, I got the idea. It was more more than I than an idea. It was a vision. I would like um, to spread the wonderful healing, supportive energy of color and light into the world, to offer support and, and hope, yes, support, hope, healing, new ideas, uh, trust, yeah, new outlooks on life, yeah. So this was in September, and I brought together an awesome group of Right now we are 11 international color light experts based between California, uh, between California and Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And most of these people I already knew from my work in the past years. There were a few new experts that joined, for example, a nice lady from South Africa specialized Lynn Potrita is her name, specialized on color and creativity. So all of us, we are 11 right now, are specialists. I would say real experts on the field of color and light, but with different um, uh, approaches, of course. Everyone has his own kind of working. And we are offering now, starting January, Zoominars, um, uh, so workshops via Zoom um, that are meant to bring support and inspiration and help and and love and trust and and new ideas. And these Zoominars are meant to be. They are suited as well for professionals who are already working in some way with light therapy or colors or color therapy, but also for lay people who just feel attracted and want to be, get inspired and, and want to uh, experience, uh, make a new experience or maybe uh, get new ideas. So it's for both. Mm -hmm. And we, have ju we just had a, a beautiful start of the project because on December 12th and 19th, we offered color lights gifts to the world. Mm -hmm. So we had two Zoominars, each time five or six of us gave some colorful gifts, you know, mm -hmm. to our attendees, to our participants. 
and it was a meditation or an inspiration or an inspirational talk. We even had um, a color light therapy session done via Zoom from the Japanese ladies and colleagues. That was really awesome. We also do have a vision therapist uh, who is part of us, Nathan Oxenfeld, who did, uh, offered some beautiful advice and exercises for the eyes because we are all, our eyes are quite challenged right now, also due to screen time. So, and it was amazing because it's, it was the start of the project. And I'm very happy because each time we had about 100 participants coming from 30 countries on the world, more than 30. So very happy start of the project. And I'm very much looking forward to, to next year. And I already have a full program until June. Mm -hmm. Every month, two or three uh, experts will hold a, a workshop via Zoom. Oh, sounds wonderful. Yes, sounds so wonderful. So I know people want to find out how do they get on these Zoom Zoominars and also if someone wanted to work with you, how do they get a hold of you? Do you have a website or Facebook page? Yes, I have my website is a uh, color uh, slash burish b u r e s c h dot a t. Then I also have a YouTube channel also called color slash burish, B-U-R-E-S-C-H. Uh, I have a Facebook page with a lot of information also called color burish. Uh, yeah, so these are main channels. And um, yes, I invite you to have a look at my website. The whole program is already on the website with these awesome speakers, all of them luminaries. And it's already possible to book, book your seat uh, via the website. Beautiful, thank you so much. And that is just so exciting. So exciting to bring that to the world. Oh yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I've, I've noticed uh, Kimberly that in our first two Zoom events, yeah, we had quite some people who are new to the field of color and light. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy about that because, because um, you know, as I'm working, I've been working for such a long time on this field. I know that sometimes people have the tendency of underestimating that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And kind of thinking, oh, that's nice. It's lovely, but that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many people don't know the many effects colors and light do have. So I'm very happy that we managed to attract many new people around the world. Beautiful, yes. I'm gonna change gears for a minute and just go personal. What gives you the most joy and happiness in your life right now? Well, what I just mentioned, I'm very happy that this new Color Lights project has started so well that really gave, gives me happiness. Mm -hmm. um, right now, well, I'm a happy, happy mother of three grown kids. Mm -hmm. And due to COVID, you know, they are at home. Mm -hmm. They are much more at home than they usually would be. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm enjoying, you know, this, this plus on, uh, plus family time that we are having now. And, and they are all three wonderful kids uh, being on their way and on their path. I, 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 I'm lucky because I have a very lovely husband. So, and we have been together for a long time. So I'm looking forward to our Christmas uh, celebration in the next days. Um, I also realize, you know, because it's not so uh, granted anymore that you can meet friends. So I enjoy, I realize that I have really lovely friends. And yes, I also meet them sometimes on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And normally, if we wouldn't have a lockdown, what we have right now in Austria, again, I love swimming a lot. 
Mm -hmm. I do uh, almost daily my, my power walks mm -hmm. because, you know, everything's closed. You can't go to the fitness uh, mm -hmm. center or I'm a swimmer. I love swimming. I, I was even doing some competition mm -hmm. swimming in the last 10 years. And actually, I love uh, art and theater mm -hmm. as well. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thanks so much for being on the podcast today and sharing your wisdom and uh, so, there's something very new for a lot of people. So thank you oh, so much. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Kimberly, for having me. Really lovely. Appreciate that a lot. And yeah. thanks for what you are doing, Kimberly. I think it's really awesome, your, your podcast and the Incredible Life Crea Creator podcast. And with, with what you are doing, you are bringing inspiration to the world, especially now so important, I think. Yes, it, it certainly is. Thank you so much. So I have one last question before we get off. What yes. is your best advice on living an incredible, amazing life? I, I believe it's, it's very helpful if you... Um, get to know your, yourself as much as you can uh, because this, that's important so that you, you are in contact with yourself and you know your traits and your strengths and also your talents. Yeah. So my experience is, and that's an, an advice that I myself received a long time ago, it was from my first consultant that gave me the courage to become self-employed with my colors. Mm -hmm. um, work on yourself so that you yourself are at ease with yourself. You love yourself. And so you become the best version of yourself and then you will be successful. So she said to me, and I will never forget that. And I'm happy that I can say it now. So become yourself the success that you want to have. Mm -hmm. And I also want to encourage to follow your dreams and to believe in your dreams and intuition. That's also very important. Beautiful, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you again soon, Gabrielle. Thank you, Kimberly. Mm -hmm.